Hey everybody, Wes here, Cast Iron Medic, and I'm going to be doing a video where I am restoring a couple of cast iron pans. As a matter of fact, this is one of those pans. All right, guys, so a little bit about me. So first off, I am not a metallurgist. I do have a degree in biology and chemistry, but I'm not a metallurgist. However, I worked in the machine tool industry for a lot of years. I know a lot of metallurgists, and I dare say that the company I worked for was the number one company in the world for manufacturing and creating new cutting tools and metalworking tools. So I knew a lot of metallurgists, and every time something would come up concerning cast iron, they knew how much I loved it. I would ask them about it, and they would give me the correct answer, and they'd tell me what to do. So everything we're going to talk about is based on information I got from them, and my own personal experience. Yours may vary, but here's where we're gonna go. All right, let's get started. Myth number one, never use soap on your cast iron. This myth is completely wrong. People, it is okay to use soap on your cast iron. Now, I wouldn't put it in a dishwasher, but if you wanna use soap to clean it up, that's perfectly fine. It'll still hold its seasoning if the seasoning is done correctly. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with one of our other myths. But soap is perfectly fine. If you've ever been to Waffle House, okay, and you see those guys making cheese eggs in, in, in the cast iron skillet, or if they make an omelet and they do it in the cast iron skillet, those things never stick. They work wonderful. And you know what? They wash those with soap and water. Yes, they do. It's all about how the seasoning's put on. Now, if soap takes your seasoning off of your cast iron pan, something is wrong with your seasoning. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second, okay? Myth number two, cast iron heats evenly. No, no it doesn't. Cast iron, when it is formed, you gotta remember, this is iron that's molded, uh, it's poured into a form. Okay, so it's heated up till it gets to a good liquid pouring temperature. It's poured into a form and then it cools to make your pan or, or whatever you have. Okay, not very good for making sure that all the levels of are exactly the same all the way across that pour. It's, that's not very good for making sure the density of the metal is the same during that pour there are actually parts of a cast iron pan that are more dense than others and they're going to heat differently okay so a cast iron pan does not heat evenly if you don't believe me get yourself a good infrared temperature probe you know that you can aim at it put it on an eye put it like on medium and then just start checking spots individual spots and you're going to see some differentiation in there okay uh, and that's normal. Now, what cast iron does do is it absorbs heat quicker than it releases heat. Okay, so you can get it very, very hot and it can hold that heat. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you've got an electric heat source under a pan, okay? And that heat source is set at exactly 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that pan is going to climb to 200, 250, 275, 300 the reason is, is because you're putting heat in and it's absorbing the heat quicker than it can give it off. Now it's eventually gonna reach an equilibrium point, but it's gonna be higher than whatever it is that you're pumping into it. Kind of works like an insulation. Here's one for you. Number three, I hear this all the time from people. Cast iron acts like a sponge. No, no it doesn't. Cast iron is not a sponge, people. Cast iron, just like any other metal, when you heat it up and when you pour it into a mold, it, it looks like grains. If you cut a piece of metal in half and you look at it like under an electron microscope, there's grains. And the finer the grain, okay, the less voids they are in, in between those little pieces of grains. That becomes important sometimes. Now with cast iron, cast iron has fairly large grains. So what happens is when it cools, if we were to look at that surface under a microscope, you'd see all kind of divots and craters and things like that, but they don't go all the way through. 
It does not soak stuff up like a sponge. So in the series where you see me cleaning this, I'm going to be using easy off oven spray. You can use live water. You can use all kinds of different chemicals. And people say, oh, don't do that. It's going to soak it up like a sponge. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, it'll wash right off. Okay. There are some nooks and crannies in there. We're going to use those to our advantage when we put the seasoning on. Okay. And, um, and, uh, you know, they, they will work for us. We're going to burnish it. We're going to knock them down a little bit. We don't real, real sharp points sticking up, but it just doesn't happen. I hear this myth a lot. I hear, well, I can't use cast iron cookware because I have a glass top stove and also wrong. I, I have a glass top stove. I use cast iron cookware all the time. Now you have to be careful. Okay. If the bottom of your cast iron cookware has a burr on it, you know, a little piece of metal or something that can scratch the glass, that could be a problem because once that glass gets scratched, it breaks very easily when it gets heated. The other thing you have to be careful about is if you're using extremely high heats for extremely long periods of time because the pan can actually absorb enough heat where it starts to melt the glass. Uh, also, you don't want to bang cast iron onto uh, a glass stovetop. I mean, obviously, you don't want to drop it because it's going to mess it up. But you definitely can use it on a glass stovetop. I do it every day. This next one isn't a myth so much as it is, um, it's just not good to do. Okay, I hear people all the time talk about, well, as soon as I finish using my cast iron, I spray it down with Pam or I wipe it down with oil and then put it into back into the cabinet. Why? There's no need to do that if it's properly seasoned. Okay. And what is proper seasoning? Okay. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, we're definitely going to talk about it when I'm, I'm, I'm redoing the pan and, and I'm t and tell you why, even though you're using oil to season the pan, when you're done seasoning, it's not really oil that's left on your pan. Hmm. It's a process called polymerization. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Since we've mentioned it a couple of times, let's go ahead and talk about seasoning a pan. When you look at a pan that's properly seasoning, what should you, should, should you, I'll get it in a minute. What should you be looking for? You should be looking for a pan that looks almost, it's dry. It's completely dry to the touch. It's not sticky. It's 100% dry. It's clean. You can see all the metal. Um, there, there's no baked on grease or crud on the outside of it. Some people will look at that and they see all that stuff baked up on the outside and they say, oh, that's got a good seasoning. No, what that is is disgusting. Uh, that is just baked on grease and dirt and grime and uh, So, uh, no. But it should feel dry. It shouldn't be sticky. There shouldn't be oil on the surface. It should almost look like just wet iron, okay? And that is a good seasoning. So what is seasoning? Okay, so here's what seasoning is, okay? You take your pan and you put a grease or an oil on it, something that's food grade. I use uh, flaxseed oil, and I'll, I'll explain why. But what you want to do is you want to polymerize that oil. Now, what does that mean? That means we're going to take the oil. We're not changing what chemicals are there. Mainly carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are there in cooking oils. Most any oils. They're fatty acids. Okay, so here's the thing. What we want to do is we want to take that oil and polymerize it. And by polymerizing it, I'm not changing the chemicals are there, but what I am doing is I'm changing their structure. Okay, so instead of maybe being lined up in straight little lines, I'm going to change them so that they're all linked together. So how do we do that? We do that with heat. Now you can use any food, oil, or grease that you want to you use. Baking grease, you can use uh, sunflower oil, you can use anything. It doesn't matter. But the catch is, you have to get it hot enough for long enough in order to season it. Now if you've ever seen anybody that said, oh, I just seasoned this pan, you pick it up and it's sticky. The reason is, is they didn't get it hot enough, or they did get it hot enough, but they didn't let it go long enough. And if you start doing some comparisons and looking at the chemistry and the structures, uh, what kind of structures it forms when you heat it up, it turns out that flax seed oil, 
which is available in some big grocery stores and health food stores and places like that. Flaxseed oil gives you the hardest surface, okay? It takes about six applications. We'll talk more about that uh, when we get into actually restoring the pan, okay? But that is the key. So if you've ever seasoned the pan and it comes out, it feels a little sticky, put it back in, okay? You need to heat it up some more, you need to let it go longer, okay? And please don't leave grease and oil and stuff just sitting in your pan. If you take a cold pan, you wipe it down with oil and grease and you stick it on your shelf, all you're going to get is rancid oil. And you really don't want that. So anyway, if you do the seasoning correctly, if it polymerizes, if it's on there, you don't have to worry about uh, soap getting on it. Yes, you can scrub it off, but you can use soap to clean your pan um, and not have any kind of worries whatsoever. One of the myths I hear all the time is that I need to put the pan in my oven on a self-cleaning cycle in order to season it. Please don't do that. And there's a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't need that much heat. Okay, so why waste the energy? Number two, a lot of people put the pan in there on a rack and then turn on the cleaning cycle. Well, guess what? Your oven racks were never really designed to maintain in that cleaning cycle. It'll cause them to warp, sometimes to fall completely. And if it falls, your cast iron's falling with it. And when it hits the bottom, it's going to cause a problem. Okay? So, let's not do that. All right? I'm going to show you how to do it in an oven. I'm not going to use self-cleaning cycle. Another myth I hear from time to time is that I need to build a fire outside and put my cast iron in it in order to clean it. Well, will that work? Yes, it will work. So it's not really a myth, but you got to be careful because when you put it into a fire, you can cause things like warping. Uh, you can, you can uh, cause it to crack. Um, if there is a little crack in it, it can heat it up to the point where it becomes a very big crack and then it's no longer usable. So what I will say is it's not really a myth. It can definitely be done, but you need to be careful and keep an eye on it. I've had people bring me some pieces that, um, meant a lot to them for whatever reason and they put it in a fire and uh, they ruined it breaks cracks whatever um, cast iron can be welded but it is a bear to do uh, a lot of people can't do it um, but uh, you know just just don't you don't have to all right everybody those are some of the most common myths i hear or things that aren't quite right that I hear when it comes to using cast iron. Um, if you can think of any, or, or you've just got some questions, don't hesitate to send them to me. Please do. Uh, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, and if I can't answer them, I will find out who can answer them, and uh, I'll let you know. So anyway, in the next uh, couple of weeks, you're going to see the video posted of me restoring these two, this pan. Actually, I'm going to be doing two pans at one time. One of them is going to be this pan. Okay. And you can see I already uh, knocked some off just to see if I could find a maker's mark. And I couldn't. And it's no big deal. Some of the best pans I own were not made by the big manufacturers or no names. Uh, and I love them. So anyway, um, so we'll be doing two actually. That's one of them. And uh, I'm going to take you through the whole process. I haven't decided if I'm going to post it in parts or if I'm going to do the whole thing. And then just post the finished video. Um, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But anyway, if you have any questions, drop me a line. I'll be glad to try to answer them for you. Thanks a lot.